Good morning. I'm out in the metal shop for the very first time in as many months. And the reason I came out here, well, the reason I come out here usually is because I pick something up cheap. You know, I'm a cheap tool guy. I like cheap tools. I like picking up things I catch out of the corner of my eye, knowing that I don't need it now, but if it's on sale, it's something that I, I should get be, for the future. And I usually just stack them on my welding desk out here, my welding bench, because the close to rule, I opened the door, I set it down. So now I got to move stuff and clean stuff up and get stuff out of the way because I got something new that just came in, which is the reason I'm out here right now. But I've been picking up just to give an example, things like this. Whenever I catch these on sale, like these were only, I think, six bucks with the rebate. And it's it's a flap disc set, 11-piece flap disc set for six bucks on sale with the rebate at Menards. And things like this high heat paint and other paints I need to do, for example, the to paint some of the boxes I made last winter. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then I wanna to talk to you about what just came in to cause me to come back out to the metal shop. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we got the uh, bench cleared off. Pretty good, except for one thing. As many of you, or some of you know, during the winter months, I created this welding fume extractor <laughs> and, and it worked good. It worked real good. All it is is a uh, central machinery 8 inch portable ventilator from Harbor Freight that I got an 8 inch tube, flexible tube from on Amazon and this combined was 100 bucks, something like that no more than that and it worked well they i would put my work either on the floor or on the bench and then i would get this ventilator next to the work and then i would pull tube here out the door like that and I would turn it on and it would extract the welding fumes through here and out the door now keeping in mind this this overhead garage door is closed and this is the only door open, but it's like 30 below zero outside. So every time I did that, the cold air would rush in, even though the uh, welding fumes would be pushed out. And a lot of times, you know, it's windy in the wintertime, obviously, and the wind would blow in and blow the fumes right back in. But it's, it's shielded gas, and I very seldom use uh, flux core wire, wire unless I'm using my 110, you know, for smaller projects. And, you know, flux core, like stick, stick welding and and uh, flux core wire, wire welding creates a lot of smoke, a lot of toxic environment. And a shielding gas, not as much. And that's kind of like why I use it more than anything. Because they say flux core wire, you know, MIG welding actually gets better penetration than shielding gas. But at, at it's neither here nor there. I was the, the point being is I was using this. And I got to be a pain in the ass. Even though it worked, I started thinking of alternative methods like 
you know, I, I if you look at fume extractors for welding, they are expensive. They're really expensive. A lot of them involve cutting holes in your walls. And you know, I only have a 20 by 24 inch workspace here out in the metal shop. So even though this was working well and it was cheap, I, I went and got myself a regular fume extractor for a hobbyist such as myself. And this is what is called the Extractor Mini. I got it from the online store at uh, Lincoln Electric. And it, it was kind of pricey. But I felt I... This is the kind of thing I don't like spending money on, but you kind of have to, especially, you know, I got to thinking, you know, I'm out here all winter long because you got to do something. And this is the North Country, right? You got to have something to do if you're retired. You just can't sit around and gain 300 pounds watching Netflix or streaming services. You got to you have to stay active, ice fishing, snowmobiling or courtside. You, you got you got to stay busy, at least. I think you do, or you should. So I, I spend my winters, up, as many of you noticed, welding and cr trying to create boxes and projects. <laughs> you know, tool chests and uh, ammo holders and this thing, which I'm going to paint today, which, which I think I call that my, I forgot, box. I'll, I'll link to it. Steampunk, steampunk chest. I made a series of videos about that. I, I've been putting off painting it because I just, I use my, I throw my scrap steel in there and I'd have to take it all out to paint it, which probably what I'll end up doing. Anyway, getting back to uh, welding fume extraction. Here's my new fume extractor. There really isn't a whole lot to it. It, it kind of looks like a giant shop vac this unit the base unit on the online store because i'm going to get asked by one person even if it's next year <laughs> how much did it cost it's fifteen hundred dollars this fume extractor nozzle i had to buy separately and it just attaches to the vacuum hose. I call it a vacuum hose, the extraction hose. But anyway, this piece right here was an additional 200 bucks. Now, after the fact, after I purchased both of them, I'd learned that you can get better deals if you buy these from like an actual welding shop, online welding shop at places. They, they sell them in package deals probably cheaper than I bought both of these for, but not by much, not by much. But yeah, cheaper. This unit is fairly heavy, a little bit heavier than a shop back, but it has wheels on it, on the back of it, so you can roll it around. Like that, you know, like a piece of luggage, right? This separate piece here that was 200 bucks comes with a little magnet. You know, you can stick it next to your workspace. I, I think you gotta have this. They don't, it's one of those marketing things that I would not have known about this unless I, I actually looked at this base unit on the online store and it would say this base unit commonly purchased with and then it has these parts and you know like Amazon does they say people that bought this also bought and they show and you start looking and if I hadn't done that this would have been useless to me it's just, I would have just had the little tip of a vacuum hose and it's all plastic and this is all metal so yeah, there's that. And there isn't a whole lot to these. 
I can tell you that, you know, it's a, a 110 outlet and the cord is really a high gauge cord for being 110. You know, this is not your typical shop vac cord. But let me show you. Here's your typical shop vac cord. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. There's a bigger difference. As long as I'm showing you that, let me show you the hose itself, too. Like, here's the shop vac I use out here. Here's the hose for it. It's just cheap plastic. Really cheap. You can squeeze it and, yeah. But it serves its purpose. It serves its function. Uh, this, on the other hand, is really thick and really heavy. You can't just squeeze it. So, there, there's, there is a difference. This is definitely higher quality. And, truthfully, the unit itself feels like it's, it's a high quality unit. I haven't used it yet. I just opened it up and took it out of the box and kind of set it here yesterday when it came. So, let's have a look at it. I guess I could look at the instructions. I know back here, I did, I did take this off and look at it. It's just a filter. It's a HEPA filter. And this is where your exhaust <clears throat> comes out. And they say you shouldn't take this off, even though I did. but. They say you shouldn't take it off unless you're going to replace it because it messes up the seals. But I haven't been using it, so it's fine. I mean, it's fine. So, it's just a filter in there. And I think... <coughs> let's, <coughs> let's open it up. It just has these two silver clips on the side. And they're quality. They're not junk. They looks like stainless steel. And you open it up. And here's the bottom of it. You have these, what looks like fans here. For sucking in the uh, toxic fumes. And this is your main filter here. See that? I don't think you're going to be cleaning this filter, you know, by blowing compressed air through it or anything like that. <clears throat> but from what I see, it's good for 750 hours. That's a long time, you know, so, yeah. A hobbyist like me, you're not going to be replacing that every year. But it, it's, it's like a $200 replacement filter, though, so it's not cheap. Here's what I think you're going to be blowing out your, uh, you know, every month or so with heavy use, probably you'll be blowing this out, this filter here with your compressed air. It sits right on the bottom. And then there's like a little catch tank there on the bottom where you'll dump out your ash or your metal shavings or your metal whatever. Vacuum that out or dump it out or whatever. But this is the part I think that should, that you only clean. And it says this side up so you don't get anything screwed up. So it's like a, got a rubber seal around it. And then this goes in on top of that. It's pretty basic. It's kind of dummy proof, I think. Which is good for a person like me, right? All right, it has... Uh, Here's your on-off switch here. It has a filter check button, so that's probably self-explanatory. Oh, yeah. It also has a copper cord holder. And it has a button that says manual auto. And uh, a low and high button over here. So that's kind of self-explanatory too. And it's got a little check your brushes. This thing's got brushes in it, so I imagine over a period of time, years and years probably, you'd have to replace the brushes or something like that in this thing. But all in all, it, it feels pretty quality. And this copper thing, I'm pretty sure you would probably 
my guess would be put your or your gun, your trigger, your torch through there so it would it detects current and comes on automatically. I don't think you would put your plug-in cord through there. Now, we'll test it. How's that sound? We'll test it and see. Find the light switch for my lights. There they are, right there. Okay. I'm going to try to duplicate it being winter outside. All the doors are closed. Okay, manual, switch on. That's, that's low. That sucks, that, that's a pretty good low. Really strong high. Okay, I turned it to auto now. Which I pro I'll probably use this feature. Find a piece of scrap metal here. Let's see if it comes on, or if it should come on when I pull the trigger. And it did, it came on automatically. I like that. I don't know if it came on low or high, let's find out. Okay, come on low. The, I, I had it on low, so it came on low. Now if I turn it to high... It's on high now. Let's see if it comes on automatically on high.
Let's get a closer look. Hopefully you'll be able to see the uh, fumes being extracted like they should be. So I just have the, uh, the torch the torch uh, cable running through that copper part on the top of the fume extractor. It detects voltage coming through it and automatically turns it on. Or you could choose to do it manually. I think I'll be doing it this way because who wants to turn it on and off all the time, right? So let's see how this is working. Ow! Found out my glove has a hole in it. That's nice to know. Okay. Need new gloves. Can't just sew them up, maybe. Okay.
I'd say that's a pretty good combination, wouldn't you? I, I don't know if you could actually see the fume extraction going on because it's, you know, the, the lights and everything kind of bright, but you could definitely see there's no smoke in here after I was done welding. None. Zero. Zilch. Not. It works great. And that kind of looks cool. With them both together like that. Now, I would say I am very looking forward to great, wonderful welding projects to show you this winter. And when winter comes, I will be. <laughs> but right now, there's just too much summer stuff. Unfortunately, I got to paint. I got to paint this. I'm going to do that now, get it out of the way. So, I, I mean, I just used it. No, no more than what you saw on the video. That's that's what I used it. So from that little bit of use, I love it. I no regrets. Absolutely no regrets at all. So see you guys on the next one.